Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, okay, this afternoon, um, we'll continue with the A to Z of uh, Scottish distilleries and obviously as you watched the last show, you know that we've got to the letter J. So, hmm, doesn't leave me an awful lot of options, does it? Um, yes, indeed, the option of, hmm, one, and that's Jura. And, um... Yeah, you know what I think about Jura. I mean, I did an episode of the show uh, on the, the, the whiskies of Jura ooh, sometime in the uh, dim and distant past. And um, as you probably notice, uh, a complete lack of distillery bottlings because, well, they're not really that great, are they, at the end of the day? I mean, I've said it so many times, old Jura, 20, 30 odd year old Jura, absolutely stunning, absolutely gorgeous. Current Jura, 10 year old, oh, it's fusty, it's cardboardy, and that's for the superstition. I mean, oh, it's really, really not a very, very good bottling at all. Where does it all go wrong? I, I don't know. I mean, I remember if you go back, say, 10, 12 or so years ago when the distillery bottling was a, an eight year old, it was a pleasant, coastally, you know, eight year old whiskey, you know, quite barleyed, you know, really soft, very very pleasant and then somewhere along the lines it all seemed to go horribly wrong. I don't know whether it's the wood, whether it's they're pushing the stills a bit too too hard, maybe it's because they're starting to use peat, they're basically taking a slightly um, uh, longer cut and so you know you're starting to get some of the four shots coming over as you know the peaty flavours tend to come over later on in the distillation process so there's always that risk when you want to get the maximum amount of peat flavour uh, in in the spirit that you will get some of the unwanted fusel oils and things like that you know some of the four shots coming over um, and maybe the wood is just not taking them out I don't honestly know to be honest with you I don't work at the distillery um, all I know is I've tasted it and you know it it could do an awful lot better as far as I'm concerned so as I've done an episode of the show on Jura before, I'm not going to waffle on about um, the history. Uh, I'm just going to basically say we're going to have a look at it. We're going to have a look at a various uh, range of age statements, and um, hopefully uh, they will. Um, well, they'll either sort of prove the the theory of uh, um, where where the, the distillery is at at this present moment in time, or it will maybe show that individual casks of of Jura. Uh, may well be, you know, who knows. Anyway, that's enough of the waffle. Let's uh, let's introduce this afternoon's little lineup, shall we? Okay, so as I said, we will be looking at a range of independently bottled jurors. Um, even you know, tasting them over the years, they've not been, um, shall we say, uh, short of the the current distillery character. But anyway, we shall see. We shall kick off with a nice young eight-year-old. This is bottled by Hunter Lang in their Hepburn's Choice range. Uh, was distilled in two thousand and six, April thereof, and bottled in April two thousand and fourteen at forty-six percent. We will then move on one year, and this time we will be looking at a Douglas Lang, or Douglas McGibbon, I should say, provenance bottling, uh, distilled in 2003, uh, May thereof, and bottled in February 2013, thus making it nine years old. Now we get to the 11-year-old. Now, for some reason, I can't find any information about this whatsoever. I can't find my original tasting notes. Um, I don't know when it was distilled. I would guess it was distilled in 2003 and then maybe bottled in 2013. Um, the internal code that um, Douglas Lang and Hunter Lang uses uh, doesn't seem to match up with any... I mean I started tasting or regularly receiving samples from, from Douglas Lang in about 2013 I think it was um, and the, the provenance numbers were back 900 and there onwards but this is um, 0693 so I don't know where that came from because I just can't find anything out about it. But anyway, we shall taste it and we shall see what it's like. Um, moving on to the next sample, this is uh, coming more up to date. This was uh, bottled uh, uh, last year in actual fact. This is the Strictly Limited Carn Moore 
15-year-old, uh, 14-year-old, um, sorry, uh, bottled in uh, 2015, like I said, sometime in 2015, and distilled at some time in the year 2000, so uh, bottled at 46%. And we're going to kind of like go off at a little bit of a tangent. We're doing a 16-year-old uh, Murray McDavid uh, bottling. Remember them? Mm, yeah, what happened to them? I keep saying that every time I taste one of their samples. Anyway, this is one of their weird and wonderful aced whiskies, as Jim McEwen would uh, like us to call them rather than finished. Um, it, I think it's additional cask enhancement, I think, is what it stood for. Anyway, this was uh, originally uh, 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 filled into uh, bourbon casks and then aced in uh, export casks. It was distilled in 1992. Uh, bottled in 2008, so quite an old sample, so I'm hoping it's not kind of deteriorated too much, although there was a reasonable amount left in there uh, and bottled at 46%, so it be interesting to see what that one's like. Um, and finally, the oldest sample that I have currently is uh, 21, and this is a, uh, a Hunter Lang Old Malt Cask Bottling. Uh, it was distilled in 1992, uh, March thereof, and bottled in May of 2013 at 48%. So there you go. That's this afternoon's little lineup. This should hopefully give us a really good look at, uh, at Jura. Um, so let's kick off then. Okay, so let's kick off with the Hepburn's Choice 8 year old. Let's see what the nose gives us. It's quite heavy. It's a little bit a little bit flat, um, some nice barley, and I think it's kind of, it's just quite oily, and it's all sort of, you know, it's not gorgeous and, and aromatic, it's a bit, it's a bit heavy, it's a bit barleyed, it's clean, now that is the, the key thing here, I'm not getting any kind of fusty notes, it's developing a nice sweetness, there's a little bit of honey, there's some fresher elements just kind of starting to creep through. A little bit of citrus, a little bit of saltiness. Yeah, as that's kind of waking up, some of that heaviness is starting to sort of just, just dissipate a little bit. And the slightly more fresher elements, the citrus notes, are kind of starting to come through. And so actually, that's, that's not bad bottling. It's not bad at all, in actual fact, you know. And it just... And here we go. <laughs> We're kicking off with... A young Jura, which it is not fusty, it's not musty, it's not dreadful. So it is showing that the distillery can distill some nice spirit. Well, it obviously, all goes wrong somewhere in the in the vatting in the distillery. But anyway, about. Again, lightly oily, slightly sweet, nice sweet barley. Amazingly complex, but it's got a nice depth. It's charming, it's pleasant. And this is just how I remember Jura used to be when they used to bottle it at eight years of age. It was a lovely, easy going, a little bit of spice note on the on the um, on the aftertaste. That's how Jura should be. It shouldn't be this horrible, messy thing that it is currently. So mm, yeah. That's a, a good starter, I think. Okay, so moving on to the Douglas Lang, or Douglas McGibbon. <laughs> I know they're the same company, but they, yeah, okay. Douglas McGibbon provenance, uh, nine-year-old. Let's see where the nose goes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, now this is more, more like Jura. This is heavy, oily. Fainty, I'm getting cardboard, um, wet cardboard. It's not, there's, there's a bit of sweetness underneath it, trying to kind of balance, but there's just not enough of it. Some fish oils, possibly, dare I say, a little, a very faint piece, little bit of peat, um, but it's, it's, it's murky, it's not very clean at all, it's, mm, you know, and uh, yeah, it's, I'm not criticising the fact that Douglas McGibbon or Douglas Lang actually bottled this, it is just 
this is how Jura currently is, you know. Um, as they say, plenty of distillery character. Palette. Ugh. No, that's not great at all. It's wet cardboard, it's murky, it's flat, and there's no character, there's no... And I don't think it's the fact that the sample has kind of suffered. I mean, obviously there's not a great deal left in the sample bottle, but um, that just <laughs> reflects my tasting notes at the time when I when I looked at them. And that is, I mean, that is, that just encap... That, those two bottles just encapsulate Jura. The fact that where it should be and where it is now. Mm. Okay, so let's move swiftly onwards to the mystery 11-year-old. Um, let's see what the nose gives us in, shall we? Now, that is slightly murky, it has to be said. There is that slight distillery character. But there's a bit more going on. There's, some, there's more oak, uh, there's more toffee. The caramel doesn't have that burnt kind of character. It's got a nice sweetness to it. There's a touch of barley. And I think this is the thing. This is the thing with all of these distilleries that produce a slightly industrial style. As I keep saying, if you've got something else that kind of diverts your attention to a certain extent, that's what you want. If you accept the fact that, you know, Dufftown is going to be Dufftown and Fettican is going to be Fettican, etc., etc., um, you know, you, you want something else uh, just to kind of take your eyes off the, uh, off the um, industrial character. And this, is, this has it. Um, the oak is certainly sort of giving a lot. It's very um, upfront. A little bit of herbal, a little bit of barley. It's not exciting me, but it's not making me sort of pull horrible faces, shall we say. But anyway, pal. Bit short. It's got a bit of a kind of Ockentoshiny kind of candied sort of dried fruity kind of character. Um, again, a lot of oak, um, which does kind of sort of seem to be um, the main point or the main focus of the palette. Not getting quite so much kind of fustiness. Um, it's there. It's right at the edges. You can tell the spirit is not totally clean but it's a lot more pleasant than the nine-year-old it has to be said and that extra oak is kind of like just kind of sort of masking it so um, uh, although not exactly perfect it is probably as Juru currently is <laughs> Right, okay, and so moving on to the Carnmore Strictly Limited 14. Let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? Again, right off the bat, a lot of very bourbon-y oak. I'm guessing possibly first fill American oak. Uh, if not first fill, it was probably only been sort of filled a couple of times because there's a lot of oak again. Quite summery, nice fruit. Um... I must admit, I'm not seeing an awful lot past the oak. It has to be said, it is very, very dominant, which maybe in this case is probably not a bad thing. Um, yes, there's some barley, but it's all marzipan and toffee. And, mm, I mean, it's lovely. It's a lovely nose. Um, but it's no distillery character, which is probably... Which is why I stuck the prophecy. The prophecy is heavily peated Jura aged in sherry cask. You can't taste anything other than peat and sherry, you know, so perfect. And um, even then I've tasted that and I've not been actually overwhelmed with it. I don't, that forgot, I don't know why I bother, bother stocking it to be honest with you. Um, but. A 
Oh, that's an oak fest. <laughs> Not surprising, I was expecting that. Lots and lots of buttery bourbon oak, uh, caramel, toffee. Mm. Some barley sweetness kind of just creeping through, but you ain't getting a lot of distillery character there, it has to be said. Um, pleasant wood spice finish. It's all oak. I mean, it's not bad. It's just kind of not particularly exciting. It has to be said. Um, I hate to say that, but I mean, it's 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 a it's a good whiskey. It could be from anywhere because of all that oak. But um, right, okay. Um, next, please. Okay, on to the Murray McDavid uh, 16 year old. Let's, uh, let's see, this sample is still alive after all this time. Anyway, yeah, it is. Um, it's a bit musty, a bit fusty, a bit whiny. Mm, yeah, I remember I didn't exactly bother stocking this at the time, and um, yeah, it's. Again, it's not got enough to kind of like sort of mask that fustiness. The port is not strong enough. Um, and I suppose the point being is, yes, you finish it in port just to give it a little bit of, you know, uh, additional character. You don't want to swamp the distillery character. <laughs> in this instance, you probably do. Um, oh God, I'm being so so hard on, on, on this distillery, aren't I? But, um, yeah, this is just not great. Again, it's... Yeah, some nice port notes. The port is very clean, but mm, yeah, palate. Quite a coastal finish, actually. Quite dry. Um, I'm guessing. Part of that's because it was continually aged on the, at Brooklady, so a lot more coastal character, um, more port on the uh, on on the initial um, the initial palate, uh, more spicy, winey red fruits. Um, again, I'm not getting a great deal of distillery character. It it's actually tastes a lot better than it smells. To be honest with you, it's not quite so um, fusty on the palate. There's the saltiness is, is giving it kind of quite a, a vibrancy and quite an intensity. Uh, there's a little bit of barley, but again, you know, I'm not getting sort of a huge amount of distillery character. So, nice spicy finish. Yeah, it's it's it probably sort of redeemed itself on the palate, shall we say. So, uh, um, yeah, next, please. May my bindi make you do. Okay, and finally the 21-year-old. Now I'm expecting this to be, shall we say, somewhat better, as my experience has shown that sort of uh, uh, older Jura tends to be um, what it uh, what it's at. So let's see what uh, what the nose gives us then, shall we? Again, quite oily. It's sort of wool fat, lanolin, but it's clean. Uh, it's not musty. There's some slightly baked fruit, so it's that sort of nice maturity. But oh, my God, it's oily. Um, There's greasiness to it, which is verging on the unpleasant. Um, it's a bit of barley, a bit of oak, a bit of toffee beneath. But... Oh my God! This is oily. This this is th this goes to prove that this was a wide, wide cut. You do not get this kind of oiliness without taking a very early cut point. Um, there's a bit of fruit. There's some. There's there's a slight note of summeriness. There's um, but it's all just so oily. It's compressing it. Um, it's interesting. It's not, like I said, it's not unpleasant. There's there, there's um, you know, some nice oak notes, but it's not setting my cojones on fire, shall we say? You know, it's like, it's like, yeah, okay, it's okay. You know, it's. I mean, this obviously wouldn't have been cheap. Um, I mean, what twenty-one-year-old Jura? 
you'd probably be looking then I would imagine at around about 80 to 90 pounds a bottle and I don't really think it's worth it at the end of the day um, and that's always a sort of like a key criteria it's a case of you know it's not necessarily a case of is it a good or bad whiskey is it worth what I'm going to have to retail it for and sometimes you know you just have to discount what is in essence a pleasant whiskey but you think, well, you know, would I spend £90 on this? And, you know, judging by this nose, no, I would not. I would feel horribly cheated if I'd got this home after somebody had told me this was probably the best thing since sliced bread, forked out 90 quid, stuck my nose in it and went... Anyway, palette. Pleasant length. Again, a lot of that kind of like old, mature, baked fruit kind of character. A um, little bit of oak, a little bit of barley. There's a an edginess to it, um, which is not 100% pleasant, it has to be said, but it's not, not mega dirty. Um, it's, there's an element to it. It tails off a bit. I mean, there's you know, it's got a reasonable length. But again, it's just kind of like saying, I am not a £90 bottle of whiskey. Um, yeah, there, there you go. That's, that's Jura. <laughs> okay, so let's sum this little tasting up. Well, to be honest with you, I think the Hepburn's Choice... The Hepburn's Choice... Yeah, the Hepburn's Choice was the best bottling. It was how I remember Jura. It had that sort of lovely freshness, the barley, the cleanness. It was like, you know, all right, not incredibly complex. You don't expect an eight-year-old to be complex. But what you do expect an eight-year-old to be is vibrant and have interest and sort of, you know, mm, and you want to go, mm, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I will be honest and say that really ticked all the boxes. That reminded me of how pleasant... Jura could be. The two provenance bottlings, no. You know, for one reason or another, for the fact that, you know, there was, it was, the nine-year-old was just all current Jura, exactly how it is, uh, you know, that sort of, sort of murkiness. Um, the the nine-year-old, all right, attempted to, in, the 11-year-old, I should say, attempted to inject a little bit more oak character to kind of compensate, but eventually kind of failed. Um, 14 year old Carl Moore, a classic example of, you know, filling a spirit into uh, a fairly active cask. And all you got was the cask, you didn't get any distillery character, which in this instance, like I say, is probably not a bad thing, but it's a case of, well, you know, you taste it and you think, you know, I couldn't recommend it. Again, you know, it's not a bad bottling of whiskey. It's just sort of not saying Jura. It's just saying Oak. You know? Uh, the Murray McDavid, well, you know, again, you know, stick it in some port, try and add some character, some interest. Again, it kind of doesn't really work. Um, the nose just sort of is, again, slightly murky Jura with a little bit of winey red fruits and the palate is just sort of like... You know, all portwood really, to be honest with you. It's not totally hammered the palate, but it's kind of, I'm not getting really any distillery character again. <laughs> like I said, not a, not a bad thing, I suppose. And the 21, well, dis no, disappointing is the wrong word. It, it is what it is. It's just not worth what I imagine the, the, the price tag would have been. And this just just kind of sums up Jura. It's you know I you might think I'm being incredibly harsh on it, but you know um, at the end of the day, if somebody doesn't say it, they'll just carry on regardless, and they seem to be doing so. I mean, every time I seem to encounter the uh, you know whatever the origins or whatever it's called is, you know, I'm just continually disappointed, and I meet people that say, "Oh, why are you not stocking Jura?" and I go. Why do you like it? You know, I, I mean, I know that there's going to be people that like this style of whiskey. They like, <laughs> as people like Feta Can. In actual fact, I actually bought a bottle of Feta Can, which is like, you know, because it was just so unlike Feta Can. I was just going, 
this can't be fake the care. It, anyway, but the point the point is that there are people that like the industrial style and great. Whiskey is all about that. It's like you know, it's a personal thing. Um, and at the end of the day, this is just my personal opinion. Uh, but my personal opinion is that sort of really Jura should get itself sorted out. I mean, you know, um, whatever they're doing, it is not working. You know, just go back to how you were doing it about 20 odd years ago. <laughs> you know, shortcuts, you know, discard a lot of the rubbish. Um, just keep the best bits. I know at the end of the day, there's always a pressure on stocks. There's a pressure on sort of sales, get it out there, but do not compromise on quality. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, yeah, I've probably waffled enough. I'm probably going to be hated by um, it was White Mackay that, that owns Jura. I'm probably going to be hated by sort of Richard Patterson. Not that he probably watches this. Um, but anyway, and there'll probably be a number of you that would go, you're dissing my favourite distillery. Well, you know. Anyway, so uh, there's just not an awful lot left and there's none of the Hepburn's choice. <laughs> I'm kind of uh, stuck with this one. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, this episode of the show. Um, you know, any rude emails, <laughs> yeah, yeah. please don't send them. Anyway, um, all I can say is good afternoon or, yeah, one, it's not quite good afternoon at the moment. I managed to do this a little bit earlier because of sleeping doggy, don't ask. Anyway, <laughs> good morning and uh, good dramming.